and welcome back to Butcher That Model and part one of our build the Airfix U Boat Type 7C dash boat that we're going to be doing casting resin. It's going to be a cool build, absolutely cool, good fun to do. Now then, empty the stuff out of the box, put the decal somewhere safe and dry. And then we'll do the destructions. Now this is going to be a very, very straightforward build. Build. So when we come to the the diorama of the seascape, that's going to be the fun part. So let's get everything unpacked. Pop the paints out. Pop the sight and snot out. And another new paintbrush. Always good. It's always good under bushes. Nice and loud and crunchy and crackly. Just what the audio wants in the video. Well, let's just throw that bit in the bin. Then the painting is a very, very simple paint scheme as well. We'll worry about that later on. So, what we're going to get, we've got a 64. 27 they're the two greys you've got a lighter grey for the hull and a darker grey for the conning tower another 33 which you know is matte black and a 54 which is a copper colour bronze colour well, it's gold in this one for the propellers and the anchor. I mean, there's a tiny bit of that, you can have a lot of that left, and that's good stuff. Metallic paints, really good to have, handy to have around. So you never know when you can do little tiny bits of touches up on things like Gundams, sci fi stuff. Always handy to have. Right, put that to one side, new brush, and then we'll. What I'll do is I'll pause the video a second and I shall go downstairs to the kitchen and I shall put this in warm water with some washing liquid give it a bit of a scrub and I shall be right back when it's dried two well one second really instantly really it's time machine what is it time machine Woo, back again that was quick wasn't it nice easy job to do right so we'll do is we'll get our little storage box. Our little storage box. I hit them. I hit them. It's on the way. That deep dark place with the spiders and that. Put my stash. Right, so I'm little box up. We'll put in there. And what we'll do is we'll take all the big parts off. Give them a clean, sand them down, get them ready and prepped, and then we'll probably build it all apart from the tiny parts. So we'll probably build. I think what we can do is we can do steps one, two, and three. We'll miss out four for now and do five and put five and six. Put we'll five onto six. We'll leave off all the tiny bits for now. Especially the planes, the bit that make it dive and surface and go up and down the water, and the rudders. Because they're very, very delicate. We can paint them on the screw, and we don't want to damage them when we're, we're doing the diorama bit, the base of it first. So, like we did with the younger members of our little model making groupy thing. We'll build as much as we can and we'll get it in its diorama in the filler and then we'll take it from there when we do paintings and resining later on because this is going to take about all in all together it will take less than an hour to build this it's very very few parts it's a very simple kit 
So, let's crack on with taking the bits off the sprue. Now, how do we take things off sprues? We leave a nub. Yeah, that's right. We leave a nub. And then we sand the nub down. That way we're not putting stress marks and damaging the beautiful little kit. That's it, really, really impressive for the size, the amount of detail that is on this is quite impressive actually. Now then, so we'll clean these two bits up. And our little stick. Give it, give it a quick daughters who'd have them you know if you're in a household where you've got a brother and you've got sisters consider yourself lucky because you might fight with your brother but take it away, sisters fight worse of her. They really do. They argue more than boys do, do they girls? But there you go. The joys of having daughters. Those of you that got sisters, you'll know what I mean. You agree with me now, I'll tell you. See, tell you. And if there's dads watching that have got daughters and sons like I've got, I'm right, aren't I? So the girls can't half argue over the stupidest little thing as well. That's my makeup, they're my socks. And it's alright for them to come and take dads. Not my makeup, I don't have makeup, but come and take my socks and my t shirts. The amount of times. I've come downstairs in the morning and one of my daughters has been eating breakfast and she slept in one of my t-shirts and I couldn't find anything so I pinched one of your t-shirts out of the airing cupboard dad yeah and they're in the twenties so thanks right so that's a basically a nice easy easy fit so there and then we'll park. Now we get two decks, so one of them is for a different class or type of U boat, and in this one we want part number F3. So it would help because I'll put my Seymour's on. Seymour's. Seymour with your glasses on. Seymour's. Right. Part number three is this one. So, oh, it's a lovely little detail on it as well. Very nice. You'll have a look and see it yourself. Oh, that's a nice little detail on it. So, put that there. And get that there. Put that off there. And we'll put that off there. Now, because I've washed this with warm, soapy water, and we're using acrylic base paint anyway. There isn't a real need to undercoat. And later on, when we're doing larger kits and we're doing things like cars and that, then undercoating is a good option. But these are so small, these kits as well. It's not going to overly complicate things if we don't use an undercoat, a primer. It will be later because we've got some pretty cool builds coming up later on in the pipeline. And some pretty cool builds. We're going to be doing some Star Wars stuff. We're going to do some. Not this one, but we're going to be doing things like. Super Deformed Meng kits. Have you seen the, girl, the game World War Toons? That's the Sherman. I'm out of I've got to find that. I can't. See, my, I'm, I'm an idiot. I put things safe. 
I put the decals for this in my safe. Yeah, I can't find them. They'll turn up in the end. But this is the Sherman from the game World War II. And it's made by Meng. We're going to be doing something. We're going to be doing one of those later on as well. These are really cool. Egg tanks. Chibi tanks. They actually work as well. Might as well, we'll put it on a bit of a dial thingy. So, we'll be doing some stuff like that. We'll be doing a Gundam. Wait a on. They are cool. And they Gundam kits are fantastic. Now then, we're not going to bother with the base. Because we don't need it. So, we'll take off the parts of the conning tower. Which are... Do, 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 A1. A1 and F6. Is that, that, and F6. F and 6 is that one there? Okay. So we'll take that off. For now. Leaving our nub for sandings. It's always a good idea to follow the build on the plans. But sometimes, in a situation like this, with a bit of forward planning, you look at it and you think, oh, I can do that bit first, I can do that now, it's not going to affect anything else. And I can do other things to the kit, like we're going to do in a moment. Well, not in a moment, then. By the end of this video. So, let's... Let this bit off. And... This bit off. And that bit. And, and that bit, because I don't need that bit. Put that in my dirty, filthy habit receptacle. Now, nah, sorry. I know, I'm not, I will stop at one point. I will stop smoking again soon. I've done it before. I can do it again. I've made a stupid error. I can't find the part. I put off earlier. What did I do with it? I'll find that in a moment. So, let's just sand that off. Just had a minute ago. Whatever happened. See what I mean? Things just disappear. Well, I probably knocked it on the floor. Oh, there it is. There it is. Don't panic, I found it. This will happen to you on lots of occasions. You'll put a part down it. What's done that? Where's it gone? And then you spend about 20 minutes on the floor on your hands and knees trying to find it. And then you'll find it stuck to your elbow or your forehead. You think I'm joking, honestly? It'll be stuck to your forehead or it'll be stuck to your elbow or your foot. Oh, they're tiny bits. Ooh, yeah. Right then, and I think anti fouling scoop. Five, six, and seven. I think they know tiny, tiny bits as well. Once I find them. Very careful as well. The front gun on this has got a warp. 
damaged in the box in transit. Be careful with that. I seem to be having a fart of the brain. Then what we'll do is we'll leave that bit then for now because they are teeny tiny parts and we don't want to break them off. We don't want to damage them while we're fitting it to the base. So what we can do is we can glue these sections together. So Where's my tail? Where's my tail? Grab the tail. Never glue on your mum's table. Always glue on a tail or one of those pallet things from Wilkinson's or the works or the range or always on. You know the thing I mean, the plastic painting pallets. Yeah. Right, so that's just tiny bits of glue. I've got to tell you, you don't need a huge amount. You'd be surprised at how little glue you actually need to stick things together. It really is surprising. Things like mine. Yeah. Line up. Don't be horrible. There we go. That bit lined up. And that bit lined up. So all you need to do, just hold it for a couple of seconds. The glue will grab. And then what we can use with this one is as we've got little drawers. And just stick some elastic bands around it. It'll be very hard to uh, use clamps on this because of the shape. It'll have a tendency just to ping. No, it's not. Don't do us any good. Is it pinging away? Right. I'll just take a couple of elastic bands on it. All lined up. Like that. And then basically just come mad. Go nuts with an elastic band. Very nice and secure. squeezing the tube it's what's just flowing as I'm moving and I'm spreading just spreading what comes out 
the last thing you want to do is go and put a huge big blob just sit snug and it's already starting to look like a submarine So it's not going to be quick, it's not going to be slow build this, we're going to have this built in like probably about an hour if we was building it yourself at all. It's a very, very fast build. I didn't part, I haven't even count the parts. About 33 or 34, something like that, probably. It's not huge, I can't count. And then, I'll just stick this together. That's awkward. That's not really. There's a bit of tiny flash that I'd never noticed. Just on the inside edge. I didn't notice that because it was the opposite way. There we go. That's fine. And then this part. check if you're not sure whether something is a nub or it's something that's supposed to be there and you're fastening something to later on there's nothing more frustrating than sanding something off and then realize oh no i needed that in two steps down the line so always have a look at your plans and just check and then double check it's that things when you're making something there's a very famous saying, you might have heard your granddad say it or your dad say it. Measure twice and cut once. It's exactly the same with this. Check twice before you glue anything. That's that onto there. The entire thing <coughs> will sit on top of the submarine. And let's dry fit it. So it's going to sit on there like that, and that fits perfectly. So I'll put a tiny bit of sticking stuff. Just a tiny bit of sticking stuff, and then we'll plonk it on. And now it's really starting to look like a submarine. <coughs> oh, I'm coughing again. That's my throat again. I got the frogs turned up. Some some juice. Oh, that's better. That's better. Still vimped off, right. I had that in a hotel when I was driving couches years ago. I was in a 
in the restaurant in the hotel down for lunch and this young lady that was the waitress said to me what would you like to what would you like to drink sir i saw just water she went still water i said oh yeah i haven't changed my mind and she had the most blank expression on her face i'd ever seen the other people at the table laughed Right then, so that's on there and that's on there. Now the rest of it is tiny, tiny, delicate parts. So we shall leave that to dry. Okay, leave that to the side for the for the glue to work its magic, and then we can get on painting that in a little bit. Now then, the box. Did you get the box? I've got the box and what I've done is I've taken I've unscrewed the two hinges and the cap okay and I have packed it out with polystyrene all right just sheets of polystyrene I just cut it to the size and put it out and I've left about do we measure it where's my measuring stick I have a measuring stick somewhere in amongst all this lot is a measuring stick the stick of many measurings here we go right then in newspeak that is 12 millimeters about 12 to 15 millimeters you want to leave it you want to put your polystyrene in and leave about between 12 and 15 millimeters is about fine okay I didn't do it like camera because it's you want to see me cutting up this polystyrene. Right then. What I've also done, for you know the project we said we can do this and give it to your mum. Now what I've done is I've coated this already in watered down PVA. Plus this is very soft wood. If we just paint it straight onto it, it'll go and suck in so much moisture from the paint. Right. I've just sealed it with P watered down PVA and we'll just paint that later on we'll do that later it's a little silly side project it's not a silly side project it's for your mum it's a nice project for your mum later on right then so while that's doing that you could be doing this couldn't you get your polystyrene cut it to size sit it in there all right and leave literally leave like I said about 15 millimeters because when we get with some rain, we want to sit it in a little tiny bit, but you want to be able to see it. So about 50 millimeters is about the right height that we want. Because don't forget, we're going to put some filler to form a barrier between this and the resin. Because when the resin starts to cure and go off, it starts to heat up, and it will melt. What's that? And it'll go, and then we'll end up with a mess we don't want that so about 12 to 15 millimeters depth between the top of the polystyrene and the top of the box so you got me doing that and we'll be doing that we'll be waiting for this to dry all right and i'll see you in a minute in a second in a time machine and we're back in the room right. clever isn't it time machine right then <clears throat> the next thing we need to do is you need to get a bit of cardboard cereal packet something like that okay now you've got your polystyrene in your box and then use the cereal packet and just make a frame because this next bit is messy and you don't want to get the filler on the inside of the box on the edge you want to try and make it look nice and neat all right so just put some card in there all right get your submarine and then what you're going to do put it roughly where you want it where you think it's going to go and then press down and make an indentation. All right. And then getting our little craft knife. All we want to do is cut out a little shape, a little V shape, only about four or five millimeters deep. That's all. And that's where. Something is going to sit in. We want to do it so that a little bit at the bottom of the tub 
Cool. It's Christmas. He's going to kill me. Just like that. Okay. You want to leave the back bit free. All around here. All right. Because that's where the propellers are going to go. Now we're going to get the propellers. Hopefully the propellers and the wood and that will sit. Virtually on the top of the polystyrene. All right. We'll put a little tiny groove for it underneath it. Now it doesn't matter because the resin and the filler that we're going to use in. Right. The filler will put the barrier to stop the polystyrene melting. Okay, and then the resin there's their gaps underneath the resin will fill the gap. Alright, well, I'm almost a tiny bit, tiny bit more deep at the front. Not a lot. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Oop, put it in the right way, Dave, you idiot. Oh, Dave's an idiot, don't be like Dave. Right, so you want it to sit, just like that. Alright, you've got enough room at the back to get. The propellers and the rudder. Just keep taking little bits out, but they're mad. But they're too deep. Just kind of bits out. But you want to leave enough room as well for filler to be put in there as well. Otherwise, we run the risk of the resin. Melt in the post iron and you don't want that. I will tell you what these little balls of post iron before. My wife goes mad about having bits of post iron balls everywhere. She hates it when I get packages with packing peanuts and things like that. Alright, so that will just about do as I think. Then what we need to do. Let's put that somewhere nice and safe. We don't want to get it covered in filler. It's the last thing we want to do. Get the big bits out. I'll have a proper sweep up there, haven't you? She won't know. Don't tell her. Right then, so. Spoon. A disposable spoon. And some sort of spatula. Now I'm just going to use one of our sandy sticks. Because they come in packs of about ten, don't they? So, get the filler, tiny amount of water, just to help it on its way. All, right. now, all we're going to do is literally put a very thin layer. All right. Don't go mad, don't go having it like inches thick, it's literally just a thin layer. Just so there's a barrier between the polystyrene and the resin. So it's going to take a good 10 minutes or so just to get it in there. Literally just about a millimetre thick, that's all you need. Don't go barmy, don't go bonkers with it. Up to the edge. And literally smooth it off. It's like ice in a cake. I don't have a rice to cake. I don't, I, don't I don't think I ever have. I'm in my mid 50s and I've never iced a cake. That's quite sad, isn't it, really? I'll put that on my bucket list. Have you done a bucket list? You need to do a bucket list of things you want to do. My father, when I was 14, made me write a bucket list. And he said, when he looked at it, he went, that's boring. Put something daft on there. What do you mean? Put something stupid on there. Now, I didn't put parachuting. 
I'm not scared of height, I'm scared of ground. It's the ground that kills you, not the height. So, I sat there and I thought and I thought and I thought, and I thought, what's the stupidest thing you could ever do? So I actually brought <coughs> Piddle in a volcano. And then, many, many, many years after that, I had the opportunity at Mount Vesuvius. So I piddled in a volcano. That was on my bucket list. Swim with sharks. I did that when I was in the army. I was, I did diver training. You had to specialise in them days. You weren't just a soldier, you had to specialise in things. And I chose diving, because I thought, oh, that'd be cool. It was actually hard work. It's good fun, but hard work. And I was doing my diver training. And I was at a place called Chettle Beach in Dorset. And I was doing a dive and I was swimming away quite happily. And I was swimming one way and this little blue shark was swimming the other way. Now when you're underwater and you've got your goggles on, everything's magnified by a third. This thing looks huge swimming towards me. And the first the stupid thing is the first thing that came into my head was the music for Jaws. And I stopped in mid air, in mid, in mid, in mid water, in about 20 feet deep, and he did the same. And I was looking at him, and he was looking at me, and it felt an eternity. It was about three or four seconds, probably. And I went that way, and he went that way, and I never met him again. But. Yeah, so I swam with, swam with a shark. It was only a little blue shark. It's not done anything. I certainly wouldn't go swimming around with great whites and tigers and bull sharks. <laughs> Thank you. Not if I can help it. But that was fun. That was fun. So write a bucket list and put something silly on it. You know, abseil off a building. I did that. That was good fun. Ice a cake. I know it sounds silly, but I've never done it. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to add that to my bucket list. But go out and silly, really silly things like find a unicorn. They're just skinny rhinos. There's no such thing. It's just a skinny rhino. It's a rhino that's been at Weight Watchers. Right then. So, doing me rambling on. That's the stage we're up to. Okay. Now then, if you want to check to make sure it fits properly, get yourself some silver foil or some clean film is that long enough? yeah and just wrap the submarine up in it just wrap him up in it and then that was the back bit wasn't it? yeah and that was a pointy bit that was the front bit and then just sit him in there and wiggle him make sure he's going to stay there alright and that will be the perfect fit when that dries out. So very carefully now. Wiggle him and lift him out. And then you need to leave that to dry now for about 24 hours. What you can do before that though very carefully lift out the paper. Alright, and what you'll find is Now you could leave it in for the painting stage, but the problem with that is, oh, I've pulled a bit much out of there. The problem with that is, you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful when you're doing this. Otherwise, you'll have an unhappy accident. Not like Bob Ross. This will be an unhappy accident. Not a happy accident. Let me get the box dirty. If it happens, just very carefully squeeze them back in. if we left this the paper in there it will probably set rock hard with the filler and then if you need to touch it around the edge just use your stick thing and then very gently work it up to the edge without getting it on the side if you work inwards 
and that outwards. Well, that way, I mean, the humans this way. Right, and then do it sideways against the, against the box. You won't get the filler on the timber. Look nice and neat and professional. And people say, Oh, who did that for you? That's so cool, that's so professional looking. Hopefully. You know, they might just turn around and say, Oh, well done, that's fantastic, mate. They will. I guarantee when people see this, when you've finished it and done it, people are going to be so impressed with it and you're going to be so proud of yourself. And I'll be proud of you as well. I did the Facebook page, there is a Facebook page now, called Butcher That Model. So, join in that if you're doing this, and just pop, put your pictures up, put some pictures up on it. And then we can all see how well you're doing, and we can all praise each other. Because nothing does you good better than somebody saying, oh well done, you've done really well there. All right. Just remember, you might be very good at this, somebody might be only alright at this, and somebody might not be very good at all, in your eyes. But what I keep telling you, that person is the only person that knows, in his heart, that he's done the best he can. And who are we to judge when somebody's done the best that they possibly can? So, please guys. If you are going to do that, and you're going to comment on other people's work, please be very supportive, because some of you may be very good at this, and some of you may just be learning, and struggling, and doing the best you can. And praise and encouragement is one of the best things you can give somebody. The best gift. I'm not a hugely religious person, but I truly believe... One of the best gifts you can give somebody is praise and encouragement. It means more than money. How do do? So, give each other support, give each other encouragement, and help each other grow and develop into fantastic model makers that you can all practice. You can all be. All it takes is practice and patience and encouragement. And on that note, guys, we're going to call that a day. We're going to leave that to dry for at least 24 hours. In the meantime, if you want to paint your submarine, paint your sub, put all the little bits on it. All right? I'll paint it and then I'll put the little bits on together. All right? But there's nothing to stop you now, guys. When that's while that's drying, because it's going to be 24 hours, we're going to leave that. Paint your submarine. You've got the paints. Just remember what I told you about your painting. Thin coats. Water your paint down. All right. About 80% paint, 20% water. Right. Nice thin coats. Go one way, leave it to dry, then go 90 degrees the other way. All right. And I promise you, your paintwork. What did you, if you did the progress, what did your paintwork turn out like? It looked horrible the first coat, and the second coat didn't look brilliant, did it? The third and fourth coat, four coats, it looked amazing, didn't it? Do the same with that. All right. And I'll see you in episode two of Das Boat, our submarine boat. See you in a bit.